So we were talking about on-call, and in the context of observability, uh, a lot of it comes down to human factors, because when it comes to your observability tooling and your engineering, a lot of the things that are a good idea when the sun is up continue to be a good idea when the sun is down. Your graphs don't go away as soon as it hits 9 PM. But what does change is that you don't have all of the time access to the people with the institutional knowledge to be able to interpret those graphs and do useful things with them. So at this point, actually, a lot of the uh, things that were covered in observability for non-engineers non sort of applies, because now it's observability for the team that didn't engineer the thing you're working on. We talk a lot about uh, having people who wrote the code be the people who are responsible for keeping it running, but that's pretty difficult in any organization, because if you're a real small company, then your best quotient is pretty much two. Every, every system only has one or two people that worked on it, and you can't have everyone on the team be on, on call every night. And if you're dealing with a very large system, then you have all of those, that huge space of failure modes where it becomes very difficult to ascribe uh, a particular problem to any one part of the system ahead of time. And if you can do that ahead of time, then that means that you're actually doing it wrong because it means you're not accounting for your known unknowns. Every problem that comes up during the night should be a hard problem because the easy ones should all get automated away after the first couple times they happen. And so um, how do we deal with this? Well, a lot of it is just about making sure that the people who are on call have the support they need, uh, treating it as first class work, not falling into the engineering trap of thinking that just because something doesn't involve writing code, doesn't involve setting up servers, that it's, it's sort of second class work. Make sure that they have a secondary they can go to, make sure that uh, all of the people who are involved in it are going to be made aware ahead of time of what the challenges are going to be. Uh, another thing you can do is try to set up your response process during the day to be the same as it is during the night. So you have this sort of training where maybe you, you decide that somebody is on call during the daytime uh, and have them fix a problem that isn't under their ordinary purview so that they can be prepared to do that same thing during the nighttime. And in general, you uh, want to think about what it would take to get it so that every problem that happens happens during the daytime and sort of shoot for that uh, to keep your system as stable as possible. Thank you. <laughs>